What's up guys, this is Alex from X Trades. Um, it's been a while since I made a video and uh, I'm actually excited to share this with y'all. Um, I spent a couple days making some solid slides. We're going to be going over some technical analysis today. Um, kind of just uh, back to the basics, right? We're going to go over trend lines and um, basically how those play into wedges and triangles, which are um, pretty much just basic trading patterns. And I think they're essential. Um, they show us continuation and they also show us reversals and um, just kind of give you an overall idea on sentiment. So let's go ahead and get into our first slide. So our first slide today, we're gonna be going over uptrend lines for the next couple of minutes. So what uptrends are showing us, um, they're showing us a series of higher lows and higher highs, as you can see. Right, we got one test, got another higher low, another higher low, and so on and so forth. So basically the higher lows are holding up in a line and an upward slant showing bullish momentum. It's another basic gist of what an uptrend line is. Price needs at least three tests and touches on the line to validate the trend. So we got one, two, three, and we have a valid trend right here. Now to find a trade on an uptrend line, what will we do? So let's say we have an uptrend line with, um, let's say already two tests, right? We have our first test, second test. Let's pretend that this area is not here yet. So we already have two tests. Price comes up and once price returns for the third test, we're going to be looking for a trade right there. So we'd be looking to go long right here. Um, when price comes back down and hits the trend line, we maybe look for like a like a reversal candle kind of to show us that you know buyers are starting to push up the wick a little bit and that we have confirmed pretty much a confirmation on our bias to upside. So we can go long on the third confirmed test touch at the line. I put that bolt in because we would wait for our two tests and then once it comes back go long off the third line and we can catch some upside. Now there's another trade you can do. You can go short when price breaks the line. So, you know, after our third test, you know, uh, buyers kind of run out of control here, comes back to the line, breaks down. We can go short right here. Once you, you want to have a confirmed candle outside the trend line though. So, um, if you even wanted to wait until it comes back up and rejects off the back end, kind of like a, a back test play, you could do that too. You could go short up here off the line and then have some follow through to the downside. Now for downtrend lines, same gist, um, just a little bit different. Uh, I think people view downtrends is kind of scary because everybody has, you know, that uptrend biased everybody's you know hoping for the market to go up but these simple lines can help you um kind of get over that fear of the market going down because you, you you'll have something to work off right you'll know where it's going so for downtrend lines price is showing us a series of lower highs and lower lows right we, we're going down steadily slowly making lower highs and prices also making lower lows and to identify it you see that the lower highs are rejecting off the line and the downward slope showing bearish momentum and if you are newer and you don't know what bullish and bearish are bullish is pretty much um, our sentiment word for upside bearish our sentiment um, name for downside And same thing with uptrend lines. Price needs three tests and touches on the line to validate the trend. And I'll, I'll go ahead and 
touch on that here. So you have one test, two, three, four. And if we're trying to find a trade off a downtrend line, um, obviously uh, if you're trying to trade off the third test, you'd be going short because once you already have your test one, test two, and you're waiting for price to return for test three, your test three is what's going to validate the downtrend, so you're going to want to go short there. And also, you can go long when price breaks out. So this is a perfect example on FCX. So, you, <clears throat> excuse me, I, my throat went no, out. <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little under the weather today. So, so we have test one, test two, test three, test four. Um, price comes out back up for a fifth test, but you can see we got a buyer's candle coming in right here. You can tell that buyers are starting to push up a little bit here. And once price breaks out of the downtrend, we could go long right here. And same thing how we covered with the uptrend line. You can wait for it to come back to the line and do a back test, and you can enter off of there. Or, I mean, if you have your confirmed candle outside of the trend, you can go ahead and enter on the first candle. Um, just don't be surprised. If you enter on the first candle, it might come back down, test the line, back test, then go up. So similar to what you saw with the uptrend line, you saw if we went back, you know, it um, it broke the uptrend line, came back up to the line, wicked off of it, and now it's coming back down. So now, just because um, you know we broke out of a downtrend doesn't always mean that that's a confirmed trade, right? Um, still need to have a stop loss. So here's a good example of why even good setups can fail. So we got three confirmed tests on the line, right? Just like we need to. One, two, three. We got a nice bullish candle breaking out. You know, right when you see that, somebody's get might rush to buy. You got a little bit of an increasing volume over here. It attempts to break out twice and it attempts one back test on the line. So it broke out, came back, tried to break out again, came back, back tests right here, and eventually fails. So overall, this breakout failed and highlights why you should have a plan and a stop loss just in case. And this gave us everything that we needed, you know, to go ahead and take a long once it broke out. But you got your three tests, broke out, bullish candle, attempts again. You got a back test you could try to enter off there and still, still breaks down. So if you wanted to keep your stop loss at like a support area, like right here, of $64 even, just an example. But I just wanted to show you guys, you know, not everything, you know, is all good and flying unicorns and trading. Just because you get a setup and it looks good doesn't always mean that it's going to play out. So Now let's get into wedge patterns. So uptrends play, I'm sorry, uptrends and downtrends both directly play into wedge patterns and triangle patterns. So these next slides are going to show us why. All right, wedge patterns, bullish and bearish. We're going to go over all of them. So we got a falling wedge that we're going to be covering, which is a bullish pattern. We have a broadening slash falling wedge, which is also bullish. We have a rising wedge, which is bearish. We have a broadening rising wedge, which is also bearish. And for our first pattern here, we have a falling wedge. So a falling wedge is a bullish reversal pattern, um, especially for this specific setup. We can see that, you know, we went into some consolidation for, let's see, since 
early 2021 all the way to September. So that's about nine months of consolidation. Um, some may even say that this could be a continuation pattern because of the overall trend prior, right? And then it consolidates and then it's going into continuation. Um, it really just depends. I guess it, it could play a role with the time frames and but um, overall, falling wedge can be a reversal pattern or it can be a continuation pattern, depending where the trend is at. So price consolidates downward into a tight range while making lower highs and lower lows, which is exactly what we have here. And you can see how just like our uptrend and downtrend lines, we have three tests on each. So that kind of validates our pattern. So for falling wedges, buyers step in and sellers eventually get exhausted in the downtrend after seeing lower lows starting to flatten out and create a bottom. So we can see lower highs, lower lows, and then right here is where we start to see the um, trend kind of flatten out, right? We don't have a test on the bottom line. We actually see it going towards more at the middle. So that's essentially flattening out and buyers are starting to step up and sellers are also starting to get exhausted. Your entry for this trade is right at the upper trend line breakout. So um, just as easy as that, but you know, just like you saw in our downtrend fail breakout example, you'd still want to have a stop loss. Maybe you'd have it right here at your pivot low, or if you wanted, maybe under, you know, somewhere nearby. It really just depends on your risk tolerance. Um, obviously, you'd want to wait for confirmation also, so it'd be after this weekly candle closes, so after your first one. So your entry would have been on the second candle right here. And this is a falling wedge bullish pattern. All right, and this is a broadening falling wedge, also a bullish pattern. This would be considered a bullish reversal pattern. Um, this specific example, but it can also be a continuation pattern depending where the overall trend is at. So if this were going in an uptrend and it made the broadening falling wedge and then continued up while still holding the original trend, that would be a continuation pattern. In this example, we have a pretty decent amount of selling for a while. We're in a clear downtrend. Um, there's no prior trend we are holding up so and these are also known as a megaphone pattern you might have heard that term before as well so basically a broadening falling wedge you have price expanding downward into a wide range while making lower highs and lower lows so you saw in our falling regular falling wedge price consolidates into a tight price range well this is going wide so you still have your three tests on each line, right? You got test one, test two, test three, test one, test two, test three on each side. Buyers step in and sellers eventually get exhausted as they see the lower lows starting to flatten out, create a bottom. So similar to what you saw um, on the falling wedge minus the consolidation. So you can see right here in the middle, we start to flatten out a little bit. The lower lows aren't going any lower. We put in almost like a higher low right here. And that's where buyers are going to start stepping in. And then we see follows through with the breakout. And your entry could be when it breaks out over here, or you can wait for it to back test. Um, if you want it to be early and you don't want to wait for the back test, you'd enter on your first confirmed candle closed outside the downtrend line. All right, now we're getting into our first bearish pattern, which is a rising wedge. So this example is a bearish reversal pattern. Um, this is taking a direct reversal 
can also be a continuation pattern depending where the trend is. So if we were going in a downtrend and then it starts to rise up and form the same consolidation as this and then falls more, that would be a continuation. It'd be kind of, um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a bear flag, but similar to that. But in this case, this is a clear reversal trend. We were in an uptrend, right? And then we finally break down. So for rising wedges, price consolidates upward into a tight range while making higher lows and higher highs. And just like all our others, just like our regular trend lines, we have three tests on each side. One, two, three, one, two, three, even got a fourth right here. Sellers step in and buyers eventually get exhausted in the uptrend after seeing the higher highs starting to flatten and top out. So we could see higher highs are getting smaller with each test. Kind of flattens out right here. Buyers especially get exhausted right around here. Start to break down towards the line. And your entry would be right at this first confirmed close outside of the line. So. Um, you could even maybe wait until it attempts to bounce and gets closer to the line, just like the back test we saw in the uptrend, um, you know, the uptrend breakdown, came back up, tested, wicked off of it, and then came down. You could do that. You could always enter off the back test. If, like I said before, if you just want to be early, you know, you could enter on your first confirmed close candle outside the trend. All right, now our second bearish pattern, we got a broadening rising wedge. In this example, it's also a bearish reversal pattern. It can also be a continuation pattern, depending where the overall trend is at, just like the others. In this case, it's a clear reversal. We we're always in an uptrend, and stuff eventually changes. Um, buyers get exhausted, yada, 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 and we break down. Um, if you were already in a downtrend and then it makes the broadening rising wedge and then breaks down some more, that'd be a continuation pattern for a bearish trend that already exists. But in this case, we're in an uptrend, so this is a reversal. So if, if you guys can remember that, um, they can be a reversal pattern or they can be a continuation pattern. Just always check your trend. Um, not that it really matters because you're going to be taking an entry anyways. Um, you can just come back to this video or even a simple Google search probably. You could remember where to enter correctly. So this is also known as a megaphone pattern. Price expands upward into a wide range making higher lows and higher highs. So similar to a, our regular rising wedge, except we're expanding, we're not consolidating into a tight range. We're just expanding. And just like all the others, you got one, two, three tests. One, two, three tests. That verifies our wedge. Sellers step in and buyers eventually get exhausted as they see the higher high starting to flatten and top out. So you can see this would be the area where buyers are starting to no more higher highs, stuff's flattening out. You can clearly tell that you know it's probably about to break down, but still I would I would still wait to enter on the trend break. I know it got a little goofy right here. So we attempted to break down, it failed, try to come back within the trend, and then just totally failed. Um, obviously this probably shook a lot of people out, but overall, you know, your broadening rising wedge still played out and had a pretty steep flush. And, you know, always make your own price targets. You can use these pivot lows on one of these. So if you enter down here, you could exit around here, you could exit around here, you know, just find your regular support and resistance, make a good target and don't get greedy. And just like I said before, your entry would have been right here. So you can see how it broke down, came back up, blah, blah, blah.
All right, now we're going to get into triangle patterns. All right, triangle patterns, bullish and bearish. So we have an ascending triangle, which is bullish. We have a descending triangle, which is bearish, in the examples I'm about to show you, by the way. And we have a symmetrical triangle, which is bullish or bearish. And I just wanted to throw this out there. This ascending triangle and this descending tri triangle can also end up being a bearish pattern. So triangle patterns are actually um, bilateral. They can break in either way. But as long as you know you're sticking to um, what I'm about to show you, you don't have to worry about guessing or anything. So in this specific setup, uh, this is on LCID. So this is a bullish continuation pattern. It can also be considered bilateral. And what I mean by that is if this support, or I'm sorry, this resistance was in the way and it rejected off and broke the trend, this would have ended up being a bearish pattern. So any, any bullish pattern can still go the other way, but these triangles specifically are considered bilateral but I mean if you as long as you're you know paying attention to your entries you won't have to guess if it's gonna go up or down you just wait for confirmation you wait for this resistance to get broke and you enter up here so you don't have to guess or you don't have to wait for it to break down or see what it does so in ascending triangle, price is making an uptrend, right? We have our one test, two tests, three tests. And we also have flat top resistance. So eventually sellers get exhausted at the resistance line, causing a blow off top breakout and a rush to buy. <clears throat> and as you can see on this first breakout candle, insane volume. Total rush to buy, uh, FOMO starts kicking in, and you can see that this, this setup was beautiful. And I'm pretty sure it even had a catalyst to go with it, so it had good news, plus volume, plus the setup, you know, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You could have entered right here, held for a couple days, and you would have been good. And like I was saying earlier, because this pattern is bilateral, it's recommended to wait for confirmation of direction. You don't want to be stuck in the wrong side. So you don't want to enter off your third test for this for this setup. Because what if it just, I mean, what if you, I'm not saying that it's always going to happen, but what if you entered right here and it just totally broke the trend? I mean, you, you don't want that. You'd rather just wait for the confirmed setup. So you'd rather wait for this candle to break. You know, you could enter on day two, or you could enter near the close. You know, you could get shares, or you could get, you know, time on your contracts, on your call contracts, and you could just sit on them for a couple of days. And you know, deep down in your heart, and while you're sleeping, and you could sleep good because you know you have a solid setup, and you waited. All right, and similar to the last pattern we just saw, the ascending, this is a descending. So this is doing the opposite. This is a bearish continuation pattern. Can also be considered bilateral, same thing. Um, I've seen plenty of these where they have the downtrend line. We have a uh, flat bottom support and we break to the upside. But I mean, as long as you're waiting for confirmation where you see this bubble right here, you don't have to worry about that. So descending triangles, price is forming a downtrend and also has flat bottom support, just like you see right here. We have solid support, multiple bounces. You got your three tests on your downtrend line, validating it. So with this, eventually buyers get exhausted at the support line 
Um, you can see right here, there's really not that much buyer's volume. And then eventually they get exhausted at the support line, cause a breakdown, and a rush to sell. And that's when everybody panics. So on this, um, since you want to be waiting for confirmation, um, hang on one second, I'm sorry. Get my laptop on the charger here. All right, all good. All right, since you want to wait for confirmation um, for this setup, you'd wait for your first candle to have the closing price under the support. So as soon as you get your first candle, which is right here, where you see the, the green bubble, right here. This would have been your entry to go short, or you could get puts, whatever you want to do. And like I was saying earlier, because of this pattern and all other triangles, they're bilateral, they can break in either direction. Um, this is your bear biased descending triangle, even though that it can break upside, since you have your confirmed candle close under the support, you know that this is a bear biased trade. So you can honestly safely probably go short or buy puts. Um, Obviously, still have your stop loss. Still know what you're doing. You know, manage risk accordingly. But you technically, once you have that closing price under here, you waited. You know, for that confirmed setup. And it's the same thing I said earlier. You don't want to be stuck on the wrong side, so wait for confirmation. And this is a symmetrical triangle. This is also a bilateral pattern, so it can break either way. And that'll depend on the direction of the breakout. So if we break down the uptrend, it's obviously going to be a bear pattern. You can go short, buy puts. I actually bought puts on this PL PLTR wedge. Um, as soon as I saw this first weekly candle close, I think we entered about right here and just swung it for a couple of days. I think I made like 46% or something. So all I had to do was wait, you know? Um, I would have done the same thing if it broke upside. So if it broke out of this upper trend line, I would have bought calls it's on the first weekly candle close outside. So I would have done the same thing on either side. And that's the cool thing about this wedge as well, or I'm sorry, this triangle. Um, as long as you got that confirmation, it's a, it's a good setup. So essentially for a symmetrical wedge, price consolidates into a tight range while making lower highs and lower lows horizontally across the y-axis. So with all the other wedges, you know, you're kind of going up and you have the resistance in the way for a blow off top. The other one, you have flat bottom support, downtrend, and it's going, but this one's going horizontal across your y axis. So you can kind of see how it's got equal, equal lengths on the trend line. Um, you still got your three tests on each side. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And you want to wait for confirmation of direction, same thing as the other ones. So, in the setup, you know, we entered on the first one week candle close. So, we entered on the second. But we entered as soon as we saw this one close. And then Monday, I believe, I think I opened up right here on the second one. I'm pretty sure that was the last slide, though, guys. I think we went over all the examples. Yep, yep, yep. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I know it's kind of for more beginners and, you know, people who are kind of just getting into technical analysis, but I think it's essential to know these patterns. And, you know, there's so many more, but I really just wanted to tie into simple uptrend lines and downtrend lines and tie them into wedges and triangles because they play a direct role and the simplicity of them, you know, having the 
one, two, three tests and touches on each line, that plays into how a wedge forms. And um, you want to have every edge that you can get. You know, you, you want to be ahead of the market. You want to know, you want to see what other people are seeing. You want to see what the algorithms and computers and market makers are seeing. And you want to follow their coattails. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I know we had a shortened week. Um, this Friday was a little stressful, right? We had, you know, just outstanding volume and just crazy downside. Um, I know the computers had a ball selling off, but um, hopefully you guys, you know, didn't go too crazy. You know, if you had some losses, kept them small. If you had some wins, you know, kept them relatively. Just not getting greedy, you know. We have a full week next week, so that'll be great. And I really hope that you guys can implement these patterns into your trading. So, And if you ever need anything, anything at all, if you need to go over these again, um, we can go over live examples in my DMs. Um, we can do whatever you want. So it looks like we went over about 15 slides today. Uh, I really hope it covered everything for you. And uh, my name is Alexander underscore 96 on Xtrades Discord. If you need anything, just uh, DM me, add me as a friend, holler at me in the main chats, whatever you got to do. All right, guys. Thank you so much.